Hi, this is Sam Dahl from Toronto, Canada, and you are watching Soulrific Magazine. I'm from Toronto, uh, Canada. I was born and raised there. Um, I would describe my city as, I don't know, very, I guess, sports and R&B oriented. It's kind of branded as like the six now. So it wasn't always like that though. Like when I was little, we didn't call it the six. We called it T-Dot. <laughs> um, I've been doing music for maybe like not that long, like only four years. Like I've always played piano, but I started making music to release four years ago when I was 24. And before that I worked in the music industry as a booking assistant. So I would like book tours for other bands. And I was like, I'm jealous. I want to be a musician too. And someone should be booking my tours. <laughs> um, most influential artist in my genre, I would consider my genre like indie, um, indie ambient pop maybe or like grunge or something so um i get compared to lana del rey a lot so i'd say she is for sure the most successful artist in the kind of music that i like making oh. my current thoughts on the music industry are that it is um good and bad it's good because you have way more opportunity to get yourself out there um, but it's bad because it's way more oversaturated. So even though a lot of people would say there's a benefit to you being able to release your own music um, instead of like labels being gatekeepers and choosing which artists get to make it big and get to break, there's also a disadvantage to that because so many people are making their own music that you have to be really, you have to make something really interesting to cut through the noise. But other than that, I think it's an okay time to be a musician. I mean, anytime you're in the arts, it's just going to be harder. So. Um, how do you separate yourself from other artists? Um, I'm not very good at that. I'm not very, well, I guess, yeah, I am. I don't know. I'm not very good at marketing myself. So, um, I don't know if there's like a tangible way I'm separate from other artists, but if there were, I guess it would be that I like to mix a bunch of genres together. Like I don't just like doing pop or R&B, like, and I always try and um, use a real instrument in any of my tracks. So even if it's kind of like a pop or R&B sounding, like maybe like I got like more of a trap or R&B sounding drum loop, I'll always put a real um, guitar or bass or sometimes piano, but honestly, lately it's just been like a Blink-182, like -na 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 -na, guitar. <laughs> uh, who influenced your style? Um, I don't know, I guess. Well, I listen to a lot of music. Duh. <laughs> like, so does everybody. Um, I get. I can tell you what my favorite bands are. I don't really, I guess Hole. Um, Courtney Love influences me a lot. Lana influences me a lot. Love Lady Gaga. I love Lord. Oh, Lord's last album. I was obsessed with that. Um, yeah, like anything that combines genres I'm pretty into, but yeah, like Blink-182. I love um, Chloe and Hallie. That just, those those two girls that are just killing it right now. Um, I don't know, like anybody that I like, I will I will generally take, uh, I'll take something from them. Um, what aspect of music making process excites you the most? The aspect that excites me the most is playing live and anything where you collaborate with someone else. Like when I collaborate with my producer or, you know, when I go and get it mixed or whatever, when we do rehearsals for live shows, that excites me. Otherwise, it's a pretty lonely um, endeavor considering like I'm not in a band. If I was in a band, maybe it would be more fun. But since I'm by myself, I definitely live for the live shows and the social aspects of the music industry versus just being alone, like writing a song and then being like, I wonder if this is shit, <laughs> probably is, and then making it anyway and then wondering why you spent all that money. So I'd say the worst part of the music industry is like your own, you're your own worst enemy, your own self-doubt. Um, 
and just wondering why the hell you're doing this and if you're good enough. And that's something you literally just have to shut up, otherwise it's like, why are you even doing it? Um, if you can describe your fans in one word, what would it be and why? I'd say it's slim. <laughs> A f few and far between. I think I have fans of my songs individually, but I don't think I have my own, maybe a few. I have a few like fans of me, but generally um, my songs make playlists and that's what gets them their streams. But it's not like a whole me package because I've been, uh, I've been lazy with music videos and stuff. I've just been making songs and it's actually hard to keep up with all the content you have to create to make a whole image for yourself to remain relevant. And it also costs a lot of money. So that's something I'm definitely working on this year to like, get more fans, but I'd say, um, I'd say my fans are cool, cause like, you gotta be cool to like me. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, um, what was the inspiration for your latest song, Bad Like Me? Bad Like Me is just about, um, how this year, or not this year, what the hell am I talking about? Two years ago, I started dating my boyfriend, who's a really decent guy, and it was actually pretty sketchy and scary for me the commitment of dating someone decent because um, you can't really let down a decent person that just treats you well. So Bad Like Me is kind of about if I date an asshole, then I get to be an asshole because if they don't do anything for me, I don't need to do anything for them. And it's kind of just a song about like freedom. <laughs> My boyfriend's gonna love to watch this, but I love him too, obviously. Uh, the song's just more about like, when you're younger and you date an asshole, you can just do whatever you want when you don't owe anybody anything. And it's easier to date bad guys when you have commitment issues. Uh, what album, uh, who would you like to work with in the future? Um, unrealistically or realistically? I guess like obviously the goal of all time would be Lady Gaga because I'm obsessed with her. Um, and I don't know, like there's a lot of artists I really like right now that are also from Toronto. It's actually a really popping music scene. So there's this one guy, he's a good friend of mine actually named Chris LaRocca and he makes really fun music. You should check him out if you haven't uh, heard of him, but yeah, Chris LaRocca. I wanna collaborate with him one day. What album's latest release a single available to your fans and where can they be found? Um, all of my releases are found on Spotify. Um, uh, Apple Music. I think they're on everything. I think they're on like TikTok. I don't know. My distributor is DistroKid and I just clicked all of them. So yeah, it's going to be on everything and my latest release is going to be a music, like their music video for Bad Like Me is coming out in the next couple weeks. And yeah, if you just subscribe to my YouTube, which is Sam Doll YouTube, then uh, you'll see it as soon as it comes out. Or you can follow me on Instagram and I'll probably post about it. I've got nothing else to do. Um, what the inspiration behind the name Sam Doll? Oh, this one's, this is easy. It's that my real last name is Uano, Y-O-A-N-N-O-U. So not only is it a complicated last name, it doesn't spell, like it doesn't sound like it's spelled. So I was like, well, obviously I can't keep that Euro last name. Like I obviously have to do something else. So for when I first released my first single, it was Dollface. I just went by Dollface, but there's another band called Dollface. And I was like, you know what, Dollface isn't like, you can't put a face to Dollface. It needs to be something more like personal. So then I just made it Sam Doll because honestly all my music kept getting uploaded under this other band called Dollface. So I was like, better change that. And then it just stuck long enough that it actually worked out. But when I originally changed my name on Instagram and stuff from Sam Uano to Sam Doll, I was like, am I a loser? But it's fine. <laughs> Um, I think that's it. Okay, thank you so much, Solrific. I'm so excited to be on your channel and I look forward to seeing what you guys do next. Thank you. I make the same joke too often But I like my drink strong And my man a little bit rotten So don't worry